You see that now? We have the mind of Christ. We can understand the mind of God behind his instructions. Why is homosexuality a sin? Homosexuality is a sin because it is only in the male and female romantic relationship or sexual relationship that a child can be born. Remember, the purpose of marriage is the bearing and rearing of children. If you have two men in a sexual relationship, you have two seed givers. No seed receiver. If you have two females in a sexual relationship, you have two seed receivers. No seed giver. Let me take that again. If you have two males in a sexual relationship, you have two seed givers. Both of them have a penis and both of them excrete semen from their penis and seed is released, but there's no soil to receive the seed. And so that act of sex cannot produce children. With two women in a sexual relationship, they're both two seed receivers. They have no seed giver. They're both supposed to and designed to receive seed. They're not designed to give seed. In a sexual relationship, there must be one seed giver, one seed receiver, and it connects. It's the law of balance. There's a balance. There's a giver and there's a receiver. With two men, there are two givers. With two women, there are two receivers. You can't have two receivers, you can't have two givers. I'll give examples to explain that concept. In a university lecture hall, you have the lecturer, you have the students. In that relationship, the lecturer is the giver, the students are receivers. Imagine going to a lecture hall and everyone's the lecturer. There's no one to receive instruction. Or going to a lecture hall and everyone's the student. There's no one to give instruction. If all you have is students, receivers, you have no one to give instruction to those students. If all you have is lecturers, there's chaos because who are they going to teach? On a basketball team, there's a coach and there are players. The coach instructs the players, the players receive instruction from the coach. Imagine having a basketball team where everyone's the coach who's going to play. Or everyone's the player who's going to coach. When you go to a doctor or a hospital, the doctor is the giver, they give medicine, the patient receives medicine. Imagine going to a hospital where everyone's the doctor, or who receives help from the doctor. Or if everyone's the patient, who helps the patient? In a church, there's the leadership, the pastors and elders, or bishops and you know whatever people. Some churches have different names for the leadership and the clergymen, but let's just say you have a church, there's the pastor and there are the elders, or there's just a body of elders, the church leadership. Imagine a church only had pastors. Who are they going to pastor? Or a church only had the parish. Who's going to pastor them? I'm saying this to explain the concept of uh, sowing and reaping. In every relationship, there must be a giver and a receiver. When a parent and a child are in a relationship, the parent is the giver. Child is receiver. Imagine a house full of children and everyone's the child or everyone's the parent. Who are the parents going to parent? Imagine a company where everyone's the CEO. Who are the CEOs going to lead? Or everyone's the employee. Who's going to employ the employees and lead the employees? You see how in every human relationship, there's always a giver and there's always a receiver. And in the human sexual relationship, the male is the giver, the female is the receiver, and there's balance. But if you have two givers, it'd be like having a lecture hall full of only lecturers. Everyone can give, but no one's there to receive. Somebody has to be the student. We can't all be the lecturer, right? Like right now, I'm lecturing and you're listening to the lecture. Imagine if we were both teaching at the same time. None of us can learn. Somebody has to lecture and somebody has to be lectured. We can't both be lectured. If both of us were being lectured right now, we'd both just be sitting quiet like this. But there's nobody to lecture. So who's, nobody's receiving anything and nobody's giving anything. And if both of us were lecturing at each other, who's going to receive now, in a homosexual relationship, you have two people who are seed givers. There's no seed receiver. And so that's why they can't produce children. And in a lesbian relationship, you have two seed receivers, but there's no giver. That's why they can't produce children. When you don't do things God's way, you can't get God's results. That's why homosexual relationships cannot produce children. Why? Because if you want God's results, you have to do things God's way. Now, this is the reason why people in a gay or a lesbian relationship have to step outside of the relationship to find either a seed giver. So if it's a lesbian relationship and they want to have a child, they have to find, for example, a sperm donor, right? They have to step outside of the relationship 
because they have no seed giver, they still have to go find someone to give seed, whether they adopt or they get a sperm donor. In a gay relationship, you have two seed givers. They have no one to receive seed. So they might need to get a surrogate mother. They'll take the sperm and give it to another woman who will carry the child. So you see how if they want to have a child, they have to find some way to go outside of their relationship to get a seed giver or a seed receiver. Now, the reason why they have to step outside is because the relationship they have is not according to divine pattern. Anytime you have to step outside of your positioning to find resources, it means you're outside of divine alignment. When God or when a man is in alignment with God's will, he doesn't have to go out of his way to get resources. Jesus says, when I sent you, did you lack anything? And the disciple says, no, we didn't lack anything. Anytime you're in divine alignment, you never have to struggle for resources. They have to go outside of the marriage to go find, and some people can search for months, for years to find a surrogate mother, for months, for years to find a sperm donor that they want. Because they have to check his genetics, they have to check all these things. But in a heterosexual relationship, on a serial night, they can just have sex and produce children. They don't have to struggle because they're doing it God's way. When you're doing it God's way, results come easy. When you're doing it in an ungodly way, you have to struggle to get the result. And this is a meta principle. If the business, for example, you are starting is in alignment with God's will, you will not struggle for resources. If the ministry you are starting is in alignment with God's will, you will not struggle for resources. If you have to go out of your way to get resources, it means you're not living in divine alignment. Inside of God's will are also the resources you need to fulfill his will. Inside of a heterosexual relationship are the resources you need to produce children. The man has the giving instrument, the woman has the receiving instrument, and then she has a system within her womb that develops a child. She doesn't have to pray, she doesn't have to fast, she doesn't have to sow a seed. That system is inbuilt. Adam and Eve, when they were created in the garden, didn't have to pray and fast for food. Because they were living in God's will, everything they needed was provided. God always provides for his assignment. If you're in the, excuse me, if you're in divine alignment to divine assignment, there is divine provision. If you are in divine alignment to divine assignment, there is divine provision. So if you're in alignment to God's pattern for marriage, male, female, marriage, you don't have to struggle to go outside the marriage to find a seed giver and seed receiver. Why? Because in that relationship, there was already a seed giver, the male, and a seed receiver, the female. So this is why homosexuality is a sin, lesbianism is a sin. And then we can also get into polygyny, polygamy, and all these other things. But right now, I'm only talking about homosexuality and lesbianism. I'll actually get into that discussion later on in this series, talking about why also polygamy is a sin. Polygamy is comes from two Greek words, poly and gemi. Gemi means marriage. Poly means many, many marriages. So polygamy means multiple people married. So it can be a one man with two women, one woman with three men, two guys with two girls, or two guys with 15 girls, multiple marriages, right? Polygyny, genie, is, comes from the Greek word wife, and poly is many. Polygyny is many wives. So one man having multiple wives, right? We're going to explain why also those are not God's will. Right. So again, back to our question, why does God want marriage to be between a male and a female? Because it is only that relationship that produces children. Remember, the purpose of marriage is the bearing and rearing of children, which we're going to get into later on in this teaching. actually. So back to our definition of marriage, marriage is a covenant. We explained that one between a male and a female.